Welcome everyone. My name is Shafraz Jail, and today I've been asked to share my testimony of how I was a Muslim and how the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. So just a bit of background, um, I'm half Pakistani, half English. I was born in Slough, raised in Teesside, um, and yeah, I was brought up a Muslim. Yeah, I grew up as a normal child uh, up until the age of 11 when my father remarried, um, and this wasn't, uh, didn't go down too well uh, with my family. Uh, my mum was actually disabled, so after she had me, my twin sister, um, she had become really, really ill. So my father's aim was to remarry, that she, you know, because in, in Islam you can have multiple wives, that this wife could then look after my mother, but that obviously broke her heart. So they ended up in separation, um, and then when I was 14, my mum actually hit her, hit her head and went into a coma, and that was on a Friday, and a, and a week later she ended up passing away. So all my family came, um, they, we buried my mother, and everybody continued in their normal life. There was me, my twin sister, my older sister was 16, um, and we lived together in a house. So as you could probably imagine, it didn't end too well, um, and got mixed up in all sorts of things. Um, but then, fortunately, one of my family members intervened and asked us to come to Bradford. So we moved to Bradford. Um, things with me escalated, I got in you know, involved with the wrong people, driving cars, selling drugs. Um, we were actually selling drugs when we were in, in Stockton as well. So um, things were just escalating really, really quickly. Um, and yeah, it got to a point where I ended up joining the British Army and yeah, went went in uh, into the Army Careers Office with, with some of the guys when I was stoned. Um, and it just turned around that God used that time for to, to better me and to get me onto this journey. Um, so yeah, when it, I was in the British Army for four years, I went to uh, Iraq in Optelic 7, that was 2005. And uh, that was an experience uh, to say, um, you hear so many conspiracy theories, but seeing it firsthand, um, when I was there, I had this moment where I could feel in my heart that there was something not quite right of what we were doing. And I think this is where I started to have a shift in consciousness uh, about the reality of this world that we live in. Um, so when we came back from Iraq, I was actually based in Germany. Um, a lot of lads, we end up getting, well, went to Amsterdam and we got, we got stoned and um, got caught on a drug test, so I got discharged. Um, and to be honest, this is this cycle of you know rebellion inside of me and you know, probably the past, the wounds of the past catching up. Um, but yeah, so I ended up going back to Stockton on Tees. Um, I went to Riverside College to study electrician course. I got a part-time job in sales um, at, at uh, Curry's, and then I ended up getting a, offered a job at Carphone, which had commission, so it was a bit better. So I ended up going on this route of just studying. I finished my course. Uh, the building trade was, uh, there was a crash, so it was very hard to get an electrician job. So I ended up pursuing um, a career in sales, ended up becoming an assistant uh, manager, and then later on went into management. Um, I went into Your Move, uh, which was basically house evaluation. Um, and this is where my story started to change a little. I, In the meantime, that was my full-time job, but on the side of that, I was doing a bit of modeling. Um, I was really into the gym. And I was approached to do some shoots and stuff like that and then end up getting an agency and things started to escalate. Um, I was approached off on a to do a TV pilot with Sony um, and it was a, they were filming a, a thing called The Odd Squad. Um, and I was one of the fitness guys there that was going to basically guide the seven people into this jungle. Uh, well, not a jungle, but it was in the Canary Islands. Um, and yeah, on there I met a guy called Colin Riddler, who was a Freemason. And he basically introduced me to Freemasonry, which um, when I came back from the Canary Islands, we ended up um, meeting in Batley, because um, at the time now I was living in Morley. Um, so I ended up meeting up with these Freemasons for a while, and I had the same um, thing happen when I was in Iraq my heart was telling me that there was something wrong, that there was just something not quite right. Um, after a few months of meeting these gentlemen, I ended up saying no. Uh, and it was funny because the person I was dating at the time actually wanted me to join. Um, so when I upon saying no, for some reason that caused a big argument between us. And um, yeah, it was, it was quite intense. Uh, but yeah, when I said no, I realized that how 
things started to go wrong in my life. Went on a night out for my partner's, uh, at the time, uh, sister's birthday, and I ended up getting jumped. Um, so about six lads came and they smashed bottles over my head and everything. Um, and this was because they liked my partner at the time. Um, one of them tried to chat her up and I didn't see any of this. They just saw me with her and then they all came at me. Um, so this happened and then a couple of days later, um, I was at the gym. Um, I had some, you know, bandages and stuff like that, but I was that addicted to the gym. My like, identity was so much into being in shape and having this um, look that, yeah, I had to go to the gym. I ended up drop, dropping a 20 kg plate on my foot and shattered my foot. Um, and also at the time, my, in my house, uh, my shower broke, my washer broke, my fireplace broke, my kitchen seal and roof collapsed. Um, and in my house, you could feel just a, like this oppression and weight. Um, and it was a really intense time. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually laid in my, in my front room with my foot up. Uh, obviously, I've shattered my foot. Uh, it's, you know, an open wound. There's blood on my bandages. It's throbbing. And I made the decision to leave my current job as an evaluation manager, to leave the partner I was with at the time, to leave where I was living. I called my father after so many years of not really having a good relationship, and I asked him for help. Um, so he ended up coming to pick me up, I packed my bags and I just went to his house and I had my foot up for three weeks um, and I was just resting at his house and yet again my identity, I was losing weight, I didn't go to the gym so I got my father's gym pass. I went to the gym which is further down the road and yeah I came out after doing an upper body session and I was with my, I had my crutches and I literally walked outside of the gym and there was a big mosque on the left hand side. So I looked at it and I questioned in my heart, you know, God, are you real? And I had this, this experience and this encounter with this presence that filled my whole body. It filled my heart. I had goosebumps, time stood still. And then it, it went and I realized how empty, how lonely, how void my life was and how much I needed God in my life. So I rang my cousin Hashim and I said I, need to, I needed to know about, about God. And me at this point, I was, I was brought up a Muslim, didn't really know too much about my faith. Um, so he took me to the mosque, that was on a Wednesday, he took me to the mosque on a Friday on the Jummah prayers. Uh, so yeah, we went to the mosque on Friday and to be honest, I, I enjoyed it, it was good. Um, I felt peaceful when I came out. And this started a journey of me going deeper into Islam. So after um, four years of, of researching, reciting the Quran, doing azans, uh, going on Jamaat, traveling around the UK, um, and as I'm gonna show you now with a few little clips, of me being a Muslim, um, I, I followed the sunnahs, I, I followed the practices of Muhammad because I wanted to generally build my relationship with God. I wasn't doing it for humans. I wasn't doing it to please my family. I generally was wanted God in my life. Right, so what we're gonna look at now then is the verses in the Quran that made me really question my faith. So as I mentioned in the video, um, in, in the recording, um, Muslims believe that Muhammad is perfect. He's the seal of the prophet. He is human perfection. Now, um, this is Surah Ghaffar, chapter 40 in the Quran, verse 55 to 65. Well, we're going to look, just look at verse 55. And this is um, Allah through the angel Gabriel speaking to Muhammad. And it says, so be patient, O Muhammad. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth and ask for forgiveness for your sin and exalt Allah with praise of your Lord in the evening and in the morning. Now this is the first verse that is, is addressing Muhammad's sin, but we're also gonna to go to uh, Surah Muhammad. So this is the chapter about Muhammad. And this is verse 40, uh, well, chapter 47, verse 19. And it says, so know, O Muhammad, that there is no deity except Allah and ask for forgiveness for your sin and for the believing men and believing women. And Allah knows of your movement and your resting place. And then the next one is Surah Al-Fath, which is chapter 48, and it says that, uh, verse 2, that Allah may forgive for you what proceedeth of your sin and what will follow and complete his favour upon you and guide you to the straight path. So this is Allah now, through the angel Gabriel, addressing Muhammad 
that first of all he sinned and he needs to repent then he needs to uh he's going to is basic this verse is saying that he's going to sin later on and he needs to be guided to the straight path now when i'm reading in the bible Jesus says he is the truth, he is the way, and he is the life. And now here is the Quran saying that Muhammad needs to be guided to the straight path. So after reading about Muhammad and that he was a sinner, just like me and you, um, I started to look at the verses about Jesus in the Quran. This is uh, Surah Al-Baqarah which is the second chapter in the Quran and it's verse 87 and it says and we did certainly give Moses the Torah and follow up after him with messengers and we gave Jesus the son of Mary clear proofs and supported him with the pure spirit but it is not that every time a messenger came to your children of Israel with what your souls did not desire you were arrogant and a party, party of messengers you denied and another party you killed. Um, so this here is saying um, that Jesus was supported with the pure spirit. Now he's mentioned 27 times within the Quran and um, he's also mentioned that he's set apart in this world and the hereafter. But what we're going to look at today is um, the Quran denies Jesus being the son, God being the father, but also that he was crucified on the cross. So in Surah An nisa um, which is chapter 4, verse 157 it says and for their saying indeed we have killed the messiah jesus the son of mary the messenger of allah and it says and they did not kill him nor did they crucify him but another was made to resemble him to them and indeed those who differ are in doubt about it they have no knowledge of of it except the following of assumption and they did not kill him for certain and it says rather allah raised him to himself and ever is allah ex exalted in might and wise so here it says that um basically allah switched somebody and made somebody else look like jesus and they killed him instead and therefore they were deceived okay so that means that allah was basically deceiving the people the jews and the following disciples at the time who eventually became christians they were deceived by allah because it looked like jesus it physically looked the same as jesus christ but then so after reading this, I'm thinking, okay, so the Bible's wrong. But I was actually at this point, I was questioning my faith. I started to read the Bible. I started to read uh, the Guru Granth Sahib, the Vedas, and the Hindu Sikh scriptures. And I started to look for God everywhere. Um, and even after reading this, now this is uh, Surah Maryam, which is a chapter about Mary. Uh, when we read verse 15, and peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he's raised alive. So this is speaking about Jesus, okay? So it says, the peace, uh, peace be upon him the day he was born, the day he dies and the day he's raised alive. So he's dying before he's raised alive. And this is the sequence that, that it's speaking about. So just to clarify more, um, I'm going to go into the verse uh, 33 um, to 34. And now this is what I was trying to speak about earlier on. It's speaking as Jesus himself. And it says, and peace is on me the day I was born and the day I will die and the day I'm raised alive. So that's like Jesus is in person writing this himself, which is a bit strange. When I was reading this, I was like, that doesn't seem like it makes sense. But what really stood out to me is that it said, peace be upon me the day I was born. That means he was already born. And the day I will die and the day I am raised alive so that's like jesus is talking when he was alive that he's already been born but he's, he's gonna die soon and then he will be raised alive now we know that jesus has been raised alive to heaven surah anisa said that god ex allah exalted him and the next verse 34 says this that is jesus the son of mary the word of truth about which they are in dispute so the word of truth is that he was born and the day that he will die and the day he's raised alive so this was given further proof to the bible that jesus was crucified that he was raised to heaven muslims explained that no 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 he was born and he's been raised to heaven now he's going to return then he'll die and then he'll be raised to heaven again but it doesn't say that so this was another thing that stood out to me but still i didn't receive jesus at this point unfortunately Around the corner from where I was living, there was a, gr a group of Christians. So as I've mentioned, uh, around the corner from where I was living, and bear in mind, I was married to a Muslim woman at the time, um, which we were actually going through, um, but we were divorced because we weren't legally married. 
you're just verbally married and under the Sharia law. So um, after questioning Islam and having many debates with scholars um, and literally, you know, not arguments, but, but bringing up these queries in mosques, um, as you can imagine, it caused quite a lot of tension. Uh, but I knew in my heart I was, I, was, I, was, I was searching for God. I wanted truth. I wanted to be set free from the prison that I was in because I did start to do on this journey. I started to, you know, smoke weed again. I was, you know, my thoughts were becoming all over the place and I was, I was very, very lost. Um, so, yeah, um, luckily, fortunately for me, God um, basically had a house around the corner, which is a really big house. I think it was like, you know, I think it was eight, nine bedroom house. Uh, but there was loads of Christians there living in this household sent there by God to basically share Jesus around the local area. I ended up bumping into them, long story short, I ended up bumping into them. Um, they ended up inviting me in and uh, they basically ordered me a book called Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus by Nabil Qureshi. Now this was a Shia Muslim who questioned Islam similar to me and found the Lord Jesus Christ as his, as his saviour. Now, I remember reading this book and I read it in a day and I was laid on my bed and the fear of, of Allah was so heavily upon my heart because if I associated partners with Allah, I'd be going to eternal hell. And here's me now thinking that Jesus could be Lord and Messiah. Um, so I cried out to God and I asked for a sign, I asked for a vision, a dream or anything and Honestly, I was I was at the edge and a peace came over me. Um, I had a vision of being baptised in a river. It was so clear. It was it, Honestly, it was like, you know, when you have them deja vu moments, that's what it was like. A vision opened up, bang. I saw myself being baptised in a river. Um, I was filled with so much peace that I actually fell asleep. I woke up in the morning and I went straight to the Christian household. I cancelled my clients. I was a personal trainer at the time. And I went straight to the house. And I, you know told them this is what's happened you know I had, a, I had a like a vision thing about being baptized in the river so um they basically took me down to prayer and that day I, I smoked cigarettes still I, I was smoking quite a lot um I only generally have a couple and that day I was smoking loads I could feel this battle inside of me they took me down to the prayer room and they said chaff Jesus wants to become your lord um and so they tried to asked me to, to declare him as Lord and I, and I couldn't I couldn't hardly speak it was like something was covering my, my throat um, and then my left hand or my left hand side started to cramp up and I realized um, well I didn't really know at the time but it was a it was a demon manifesting inside of me and basically I ended up crying out to God I ended up breaking down in tears in front of these people and I cried out God like help me and then all of a sudden I started to declare Jesus as my Lord and Saviour and this spirit inside of me literally there was an explosion inside of me and the spirit left. I was filled with the love and the presence of God and then God gave me a, like a little vision of everybody you sent in my life that he sent these people into my life to bring me to the truth but I, I didn't listen. I was so touched, I was so blessed and overwhelmed by the love of God that he would love me this much me a sinner he would love me this much and he was trying to save me um and yeah so i had this ex amazing experience of being freed up by the power of the holy spirit um and one of my clients who who uh, it was called half pal he was a saint guy um obviously i've cancelled a few sessions now and uh, i think two days in a row um so he was messaging me saying please you know I want to. I want to train. I don't want to lose any gains. So an hour and a half later, from this experience of receiving Jesus Christ as my Lord, I went to the gym to train him. He had a rotator cuff injury, and we were going to cancel the session because of his injury. I was trying to. He came to me with it, and I was trying to get him through this. So we were just going to cancel a session, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, "Pray and I'll heal him." And bearing in mind at this time, nobody knows I've changed my faith apart from these Christians, and I didn't know anything about the mission of a disciple to follow after Jesus, that, you know, this healing. So I put my hand on his shoulder uh, and didn't even say anything out of my mouth. And I just believed. My hand went hot and cold and so did his shoulder and he was fully healed. And I was so amazed. We had the best session ever. I ran back to my room after this and I got on my knees and I praised Jesus. In the Quran, you read Allah's the, he gives signs, he gives proofs. 
Um, but I never saw it. Now, following Jesus, and this is two days before my baptism, God speaks to me and he said he's going to show a sign. And I knew the sign was going to be at my baptism. So I rang my friend Jacob Waters and I said, when I get baptized, make sure you record because a sign's going to come from God. I'm going to show you now the sign that happened. So the vision uh, of being baptized, I received from God. And it was the same river that we're going to now in Ilkley. Amen. I mean, really? Wow. really? Shaft's baptism, and at the end of his oh. baptism, we see this. Double rainbow. Double rainbow. Look where the rainbow ends. In the water where he's just been baptised. <laughs> Amen and hallelujah. After a couple of days of being saved, um, I didn't post my testimony and video uh, live on Facebook. Um, I was waiting for God to give me the timing to, to release this because I knew there was going to be persecution. And in that time of waiting, um, I actually thought I had a dream. And I thought I had a dream that I wrote a poem uh, in my dream. But I woke up and I checked my phone to realise that, yeah, about half three at night, I did wake up and I wrote a poem. Um, and it was about my journey. So I just wanted to share this. I don't often share this in my testimony. Um, I usually forget because I get that passionate about explaining what happened. Um, but this is the, 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 te the poem that was, that was written at that, that time. Um, it says, the journey began because of my heritage from Pakistan. I called God Allah and I prayed on, on a masallah. I fasted and paid charity and kept searching for further clarity. My heart longed for more because all my tears did would pour. I spent three days on Jamaat and ironed my jubba so I looked smart. I grew a beard and wore the traditional imama, uh, imama, but in all honesty, it seemed to bring me drama. I went out to spread the word to invite to God's way, but all we seemed to do was speak to Muslims all day. I used to cry for the people who never got the message. When I asked why, Muslims seemed to be aggressive. My journey started to change when I sought God's guidance. That's when I was no longer falling short to the devil's defiance. I studied the Quran like it was life or death, and sometimes people thought it was crazy, maybe taking crystal meth. The Quran mentioned the Torah and the Gospel. I studied so hard people thought I belonged in a mental hospital. With jokes aside, I put away my pride. I followed that silent voice that was deep inside. The message and the miracle that, that I read of Jesus, it was like music to my ears, it suddenly brought tears. Tears of joy and moments of refinement. This is when I knew my heart was coming into true alignment. The Quran says that Jesus is the saviour. But when I mentioned this, Muslims really changed their behaviour. They were so obsessed of being a clone to Muhammad. I started to realise how deep the root was planted. Promoted by fear, that's all I used to hear. But God is full of mercy, compassion and light. Why was it that it was such a great fight? I searched for many years and didn't feel his pleasure. I started to realise that's not where he hid his real treasure. I felt so alone in my journey within Islam. When I asked questions, I was shown the palm. Don't go too deep, they always quoted, and far away from them I floated. Stranded spiritually, I had nowhere to go, but then a silent voice in my heart started to flow. Follow me, for this is the true path. Don't focus on others and all they, do, all they will do is laugh. The journey of a seeker is my true calling, and that was the moment God stopped me from falling. Holding onto his rope, he filled me with hope. Each step closer, feeling free and full. From that moment on, my life became bountiful. Not with material or rich, riches, but within God's image, he painted a perfect picture. It was so clear that I knew my promised land was near. That was the moment I lost my fear. I still am crying out to be free, and this is my heart's true plea. I have it all right in front of me, still my covered eyes cannot see. Then I realised I was waiting for Jesus to set me free. He is the light and the way, and that's why I'm waiting for you to return one day. All praise is to the Most High. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, but I want to leave with a message. And the, the, what is the reason of me sharing this testimony for you today? The whole point is that we are born on this earth with a purpose. We, we have something to do from, from God Almighty. And the only way we can do that is, first of all, if we're reconciled to God. So Jesus came to this earth to die for your sins, to basically bear your punishment. Everybody is experiencing some sort of inner prison. 
until you're set free by the Holy Spirit. I was there myself and Jesus Christ came into my heart. He broke the chains and he set me free. And now I'm, I'm in the fruit of that freedom. I'm married. I'm happily married. Um, I'm, I'm progressing in life. I'm, I'm, I'm the person who I would like to be. And Jesus can do the same for you. If you, first of all, come to him in repentance, accept him as your Lord and Savior, he can then give you the Holy Spirit that you can then become a son of God and have authority over the earth again, have dominion over the things that are controlling and having dominion over you. So I want to encourage you, call out to Jesus and he will come into your life. He will come into your heart. He will give you new desires. He'll give you a new drive and motivation in life and you'll never be the same again. So thank you very much for hearing my testimony. God bless.